Welcome to the archive of the Second World War Experience Centre. This is the story of Bruce Vibert, who joined the Royal Navy in 1940 and served as a naval airman in the Fleet Air Arm. This presentation uses extracts of Bruce's recorded interview in which he describes the fairy swordfish and the sinking of a German U-boat. It was a machine which came to squadron service in 1936 and in 1939 we had 130 of them. It was regarded then as obsolete. One of the best known naval aviators of our time was Captain Eric Winkle Brown. I don't know him myself, but I've read some, a book of his in which he describes this aircraft thus. It was one of the most remarkable aircraft in the annals of aerial warfare. The hard fact is that the aircrew should never have been exposed to such danger in equipment so ancient in conception. Now, I have great respect for this uh, captain, but I think he was wrong. He was speaking in a sense of anger, felt at the time that the Navy was equipped with such an ancient machine, when as the next few years went on to show that it was a most successful machine. And I was fortunate enough to be involved in that success. The role was trade protection, operating from the small aircraft carrier, and the qualities of that aircraft were such that it survived in conditions which no other naval aircraft, with the possible exception of the Wildcat fighter, could operate. And that is really why I feel so strongly about this machine. Some 2,300 swordfish came to be produced by the end of the Second World War. In the same period, only just over a half of that number came to be produced of the next most common machine, which was the Seafire naval variant of the Spitfire. The uh, sight of a flight deck, first time, is a bit awe-inspiring. It's like a postage stamp. When we first encountered it, of course, it would be in calm waters, Clyde in point of fact. The deck is absolutely steady. One is approaching, in the case of the carrier that I was involved with, a flight deck of overall length of just under 500 feet. The flight deck was uh, Oregon Pine. There were eight arrestoirs and a crash barrier. The arrestoirs, of course, are for the purpose of engaging the hook that the swordfish would drop. Now, if you picked up the number eight wire, you were into the crash barrier. It is much better to go around number two, number three, number four wire. But to bear in mind that when you're at sea and the ship is pitching, and rolling, there is a fulcrum point, and unfortunately with the aircraft carrier, the <coughs> wires nearest to the crash barrier are also those nearest fulcrum. The room for error is reduced the worse the weather gets. So in the end, you're down to something like 20 to 30 feet in which you are able to put this aircraft down. The 23rd of December 1943 in the Bay of Biscay, we had an occasion when the sea started to behave in a peculiar fashion, and we had three aircraft in the air, I being one of them. So the ship was pitching and rolling, and there's no wind. The first man in bounced, crashed over the barriers, and ended up in the deck park. I came in next, next did exactly the same thing, and I reckoned that they were, I, I wouldn't do very well if I headed for the deck park, so I pointed into the barrier. And there was a third man waiting to come in, so they just shoved my aircraft over the side. I went to the, the head of the bridge to see how number three got on, and I watched him as he came in. He did exactly what the rest of us had done, wrapped his planes around, and the starboard planes around the superstructure, and uh, proceeded vertically into the sea. My first meeting with the U-boat, we were on the way back to the carrier, and the normal practice is to swing the nose a trifle so you can see ahead of you. I hadn't swung the nose for quite a while, and suddenly all hell broke loose. This uh, scared us considerably, and I got out of the way. My first reaction was, though, indignation. Can you imagine that? Indignation. In the early days of the carrier warfare against the submarine, a swordfish had been shot down easily. The next day, I met him again. And lo and behold, not only was he there, but so was another one next to each other. We were carrying rockets, and I gave the first three salvos to the nearest boat, 
In the meantime, the, fur the one further away, and obviously then facing towards us, had seen us, and he dived smartly. But I saved the fourth salvo of him, missed him. It's only now that I know that that boat that was furthest away was the same one that had been firing us the previous day. So we were getting to know each other. Well, that, year, that boat we sank. At the end of the war, Bruce was acting as deck control officer aboard HMS Glory. The Japanese came on board and marched up the flight deck. Their surrender was taken by Lieutenant General Sturdy, who was officer commanding the 1st Australian Army. The Japanese presented their swords and an instrument of surrender was signed. Please help to rescue and preserve more memories of the Second World War. Visit www.war-experience.org.